Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, we are going to continue the machine learning interview playlist. And in this particular video, we are going to discuss which are the important interview questions that are basically asked with respect to boosting algorithms. Now, when I, well, I talk about boosting guys, I'm talking about ADA boost, let it be gradient boosting, let it be CAD boost, let it be extreme gradient boosting. And recently I'd also uploaded with respect to extreme gradient boosting, both classify and regressor. I have also completed uploading the videos on gradient boosting and ADA boosting. And many people were also expecting about CAD boost. So probably in some days, in few days, you know, I'll also be uploading the videos on CAD boost. But let us try to understand which are the most interview, important interview questions with respect to boosting algorithms. And here again, I have prepared this particular material. Again, this whole link of this particular GitHub will be given in the description of this particular video. Now, in my previous video already I had uploaded and I had shown you about bagging in which I had actually discussed about random forest classifier and regressor. In this video, we are going to focus on ADA boost, gradient boosting and XG boost. All the videos where I have uploaded, I'll also be telling you apart from that, what are the important interview questions that also I'll be telling you. Okay. So to begin with guys, whenever you're learning either boosting technique or bagging technique, first of all, you have to make sure that you know about decision tree classifier and regressor. What are the important interview questions with respect to decision trees are entropy, information gain, gain impurity, like how do they work? How is the decision tree basically constructed for category features, for continuous features, for numerical features, all those kind of things. What are the scenarios where decision tree works well? Decision tree low bias and high variance, usually it forms overfitting because when we are constructing the decision tree completely to its depth, you know, over there we are not applying any kind of hyperparameter tuning. So it, basically leads to overfitting condition in order to prevent them we can actually use random forest or we can use xg boost then you also have various hyperparameter tuning techniques like you can basically limit the depth you can do post pruning pre pruning techniques again with respect to post pruning and pre pruning i have already uploaded videos in my playlist also you can search for that in the complete machine learning playlist or you can search for that specific topic and write my name in front of it you'll be able to get the uh, video itself Apart from that, what are the impact of missing values on decision tree? We, I already covered with respect to decision tree. Now, with respect to XGBoost uh, regressor and classifier, so here I'm just going to update the spelling. Okay, here also I'm going to write with respect to GB, that is gradient boost uh, uh, algorithm, right? And I'm also going to include ADA boost. So all these three algorithms I'm going to include and based on that, all the information is there. With respect to decision tree, guys, here are all the link of the YouTube videos that I have uploaded with respect to entropy, information gain, guinea impurity, decision tree for numerical features, how to de visualize decision tree, all those things along with the practical thing I have put up all the links. Now with respect to XG boost, gradient boosting and ADA boost, I have first of all given the link, you need to know what is the basic difference between bagging and boosting techniques. So for that, these two videos is already been uploaded. This boosting technique that you see I have actually uploaded the theoretical understanding of ADA boost. Now guys, there are various algorithm in boosting like ADA boost, gradient boosting, extreme gradient boosting, you know, and then you have cat boost, cat boost also. But how this boosting technique differs that you should be able to tell the interviewers, which are pretty much important. They'll just ask you that, okay, tell me the working of ADA boost, right? In some of the ADA boost techniques, you will be telling, okay, this is how the decision tree is basically constructed. Then for the training data, how the de how the decision tree is once constructed and data is actually trained. And for the new data, how the output is actually generated. After that, they will ask you, okay, tell me about gradient boosting and what is the difference between ADA boost and gradient boosting. Forget about ADA boost and gradient boosting. Here I have uh, shown you the in-depth intuition part one and part two. Now. If I talk about gradient boosting and extreme gradient boosting, what are the basic difference? You know, over there, how the decision tree is basically getting constructed in XG boost is a little bit different with respect to gradient boosting. You need to remember that. Like if I take an example of XG boost uh, with respect to classify and regressor, you've seen that over there, when we are constructing the decision tree, first of all, we calculate the similarity weights. In gradient boosting, we just don't take similarity weights. We use some different techniques in dif uh, basically creating the decision tree. After we get the similarity weights in XGBoost, then only we try to compute the information gain or gain, I'll say. 
and based on that gain we'll decide that that feature is important or not in constructing or that feature can be taken as a root node in order to construct the decision tree so all those things has been covered over here right uh, all the links has been given along with the implementation of xgboost the link is also given so here you can see this is the ensemble technique easily i've explained about bagging and boosting over here what is ada boost i've explained gradient boosting part one in depth intuition gradient boosting uh, part two here it is being and along with maths i've covered everything with maths over here this is the recent video that i had uploaded xgboost classifier xgboost regressor and finally you'll be able to implement how to do uh, hyperparameter optimization on xgboost using randomized search cv or grid search cv so everything has been covered over here you just have to follow this particular link and get it again guys there are many important interview questions you ha just have to tell there's so many algorithm why XG boost may perform better than gradient boosting. What are the basic difference? Because all these things are basically using, you know, decision trees. Now there may be scenarios that you may be using other algorithms also within uh, ensemble techniques. And that video I'm going to upload soon. That is called a stack stacking generalization. Okay. So that video will be uploaded soon. I'm working on that. Now, Apart from that, again, a uh, usual scenario that any basic assumptions are there with respect to decision tree or ensemble technique, there are no such assumption. But this is very, very important. If someone may ask you, okay, tell me about the missing value. So you can say that, yes, ADA boost can handle missing value. So if you go and see the ADA boost uh, uh, library, you know, inside that, based on that particular parameters, you'll be also able to handle the missing values. In case of XG boost and GB boost, you'll not be able to handle the missing value. What are the advantages of uh, ADA boost? It does not overfit. It has few parameters to tune. Advantages of gradient boosting and XGBoost, obviously, right? XGBoost is also, I've seen that many people like it. You know, just like Random Forest, they also try to use XGBoost. It is also used in Kaggle competition and many more. Again, there are many ensemble techniques, guys, like Light GBM, CAD Boost. They, they all are used in Kaggle competition. So with respect to advantages of gradient boost and XGBoost, it has a great performance. It can solve complex non-linear function in both classification and regression technique guys okay if your data is completely non com uh, it is basically like a non-linearly distributed it will be able to solve that particular problem very very easily it is better uh, it, it is very very good in solving various kind of ml use cases in both classification and regression problem not in unsupervised machine learning guys this is all used in supervised machine learning technique what are the disadvantages of gradient boosting and XG boost? It requires some amount of parameter tuning. Only in this, in ADA boost, it will not require because there are only few parameters. Whether feature scaling is required, since it internally uses decision tree, no feature scaling is required. What about the impact of outliers? So these are some common questions that the interviewer may ask. So you can say that robust to outliers in gradient boosting and XG boost, sensitive to outliers in ADA boost. So ADA boost is basically sensitive to outliers because the way the decision tree is basically constructed, there is a problem with respect to this. Whereas in the case of gradient boosting and XG boost, it is robot to outlier. Now, one important things about gradient boosting and XG boost guys, in all the machine learning algorithms, you know, what we do is that we divide our features into independent and dependent feature, and then we train. In XG boost and gradient boosting, our dependent feature is basically the residual, residual or error. Okay, whatever the base model is giving you the output, we compute the residual, you know, for each and every decision tree, we compute the residual and then we trade simultaneously. Okay, so this is very, very important. All the independent features are taken as it is, but the dependent features are basically the residual feature, right? The type of problems it can solve, both classification and regression problem. And again, the performance metrics are similar. Confusion matrix, precision, recall, F1 score, ROC, AUC curve. Regression uh, in for the regression problem statement, you have R squared, adjusted R squared, mean squared error, root mean squared error, mean absolute error, and many more. Okay, so here I have given all the links of this particular video. And guys, as I said, that in the upcoming video, I'll talk about stacking generalization, wherein I'll just not use decision tree inside an ensemble technique, but I, instead I'll be using different, different kind of algorithms, uh, you know, in order to solve that uh, specific machine learning problem. So I hope you like this particular video. All this material will be uploaded in the GitHub. Uh, you can check it out. The link will be in the description. If you have not subscribed, guys, please do subscribe to the channel. Share with all your friends. And yes, I'll see you all in the next video. This all videos are uploaded in the uh, machine learning interview playlist. Okay, you can check it out. The link of that particular playlist will also be given in the description. So I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all. Bye bye.